Okay? Uh, so my talk today is about X thinking and how we use X thinking to rebuild the relationship between brands and people. X thinking is Tang's, um, Tang's approach, our methodology for helping our clients design better experiences. And through today's talk, I'm going to share some of the common challenges we see when we face our clients. Uh, some of the challenges in terms of the uh, experiences that they deliver, as well as what we believe what a better future should be in terms of companies delivering these experiences. And then finally, uh, I'll wrap up with kind of sharing you what we're doing, what sort of approaches we're uh, taking to helping them get there. So first of all, we find that many of the brands and the experiences they deliver today are broken. The first point regarding that is brand experiences today are extremely fractured. Um, while I, I think the previous speakers did a great job actually for setting up my presentation in terms of talking about the future of design or designing by touch points, I, I feel like that really gets to the point because right now a lot of the experiences that people have with a brand is through individual touch points. So might that be a particular product, might be that particular service, but in between these touch points, the experience becomes broken. And you can attribute this to multiple reasons. One is from a design standpoint, design within school for, for a long time has been broken down into maybe designing from communication materials to objects designing activities and environments. And a lot of times we may break down these disciplines in terms of you know, graphic and communication design, industrial and product design, interaction and service design, interior and space design. And the problem also extends into the business landscape when we work with our clients. One of the big challenges we face is a particular part of the company may hire us to do work. So, Sometimes it may be the marketing team. Sometimes it may be a product development team. But in terms of the experience, to create a holistic experience, we need multiple departments within the company to work together with us. They may all have different KPIs. They have all different requirements. And therefore, all their different requirements may conflict with each other. But we need to find a way to put everyone together to work together. So the siloed nature of the organization creates a lot of problems when we work together with our clients. So what we believe is that the experiences that brands deliver should be seamless. That as you move from one touch point to the next, there, you shouldn't be repeating the experience. For example, if you have a problem with your smartphone, the first thing you do may be to go onto the website to you know, frequently ask questions. And then there's a chat that comes up and they ask you what's wrong. And they say maybe they, they can't uh, solve that for you. Please call the telephone line in. But when you call in, you have to explain everything all over again. And then after that, they say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't help you. They will go, let me talk to my manager or elevate you to a tier two service operator. And when they come on, they go, please tell me what's going on or what's your problem. And you have to tell them the whole story all over again. And again and again, and then they go, oh, sorry, we can't fix this for you over the phone. Could you please go into the store? And you go into the store. The person goes, hi, welcome to the store. What's your problem today? And at this point, you may have told the exact same story seven times. So how do you begin to bridge this experience together? How can we create one seamless experience instead of separating it to repeating this experience over and over again? So what needs to happen is how do we weave these experiences? That we believe that these experiences ultimately are weaving uh, to create a network of interconnected touch points. And that we believe that people within the organization need to work across these organizational units in order to create these type of experiences. So what needs to happen is it, for ex exper creating experiences requires us to shift from thinking in isolation into th systems thinking. The second problem is people's relationships with brands, we find, are very dysfunctional. When you think about a relationship, what type of relationship should you have with a brand? 
And it's very different than the relationship you have with your friends or with other people, your family. Brands are, in a way, treating people like idiots. They may have a great advertising campaign, a great slogan. Uh, a great example of this is, uh, for a long time, United Airlines had the slogan, uh, fly the friendly skies. And then a few years ago, there was a passenger on the plane, and they needed to get him off the plane, and they dragged him. He was, they beat him. He was crying. He was screaming. How does that experience connect to fl fly the friendly skies? Um, and there, are, I mean, this is a very extreme example, but there are many more examples where advertising does not connect with the actual experience. They do one thing, and then, or they say one thing, they do another. Um, another example similar to this would be Volkswagen, uh, Dieselgate. So they, they claim that they were one of the most environmentally friendly cars on the road. But simultaneously, they were subverting all the, uh, all the emissions testing. And they treat people like a transaction. A lot of businesses, from a KPI standpoint, are pushing people to primarily purchase the product. So what's actually happening is they're abusing people's trust and loyalty. After they've purchased the product, they're loyal to the product, but at the same time, they're not treating them any better. A great example of this is, notice how a lot of mobile phone companies, when you first sign up, they'll give you a really cheap rate. And that, or a lot of subscription companies do that. And then after one year, you have to pay more. I think Adobe does this at the moment. You, you pay like uh, 10 US dollars for something, and all of a sudden next year, they charge you 50 US dollars per year. Now, if I'm loyal to you, you know, why am I not getting the discount? Why are, you, why are you looking for someone else? So in terms of a relationship, how do they treat you? If my friend did that to me, I don't think he would be a very good friend to me. So we believe that people deserve better. We believe in a future where brands should be treating people with respect and dignity and that brands should actually develop relationships where they grow together with people. How do they grow with people rather than just use them over and over again? They need to shift from being self-centered and focus on developing and maintaining relationships. And the last problem we see is organizations are very focused on short-term gains. So a lot of organizations are reactive rather than proactive. They focus on very current trends. Uh, this year, VR is hot. Can we launch something in VR this year? And then because they launched something in VR this year, it didn't work, and then we're going to give up. VR doesn't work at all. So they're not really looking in terms, of long in terms of the long term. A lot of organizations are copying each other rather than innovating. Oh, they did that, we've got to do that too. And organizations are stagnant, and they're delaying the future. A lot of businesses, they know where the future might be, they see other companies doing it, but they're trying to protect their existing business, their existing investment. So we believe organizations need to focus on creating their own possible future. What might their future be? What is that possibility for them? And there might not just be one, there may be multiple of these. Organizations need to focus on constantly evolving, constantly changing. And then, because we believe that organizations themselves need to be designed. They need to be iterated. We're no longer just designing the product or the service. We're also designing the organization as a whole. As a designer, how do you design a company? How do you design an organization? And lastly, we believe that organizations need to focus on the long term. So all these statements, you know, there are brands that aren't like this. I know that a lot of these statements were really strong. There are great companies out there that are not doing these things or not being like this. And there are great brands that are really looking towards the future and treating their customers uh, w w like with a relationship. But we find this to be the exception rather than the rule with a lot of the clients we may work with or some of the potential clients we may have. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to move our clients, the industry, from being in isolation towards systems thinking, 
from being self-centered towards relationships, from short-term to long-term. So in order to create this future, in order to create a better future, we at Tang feel like we needed to introduce something new. We needed to uh, research and work on something new. And we call it X thinking. In Chinese, it's Tian Su Wei, experience thinking. But in English, we call it X thinking. And X, for X thinking, we, based on these things, we're looking at several things that we're really pushing and helping them develop. First of all, we think that they need to develop and foster relationships with people. And how are we helping them get there with that? One of the things we've introduced is a relationship model. And in this relationship model, we use it as a framework for uh, ex examining and understanding the relationship between brands and people. So in, in this case, we have many tools out there to understand people. And we may use scenarios to focus on context or activities. We may use experience maps to focus on time and experience. Uh, but the relationship model focuses more on the meaning between the people and the brand, as well as a measurement of the quality of experience and the relationship between people and the brand. So we've modeled our relationship model after the relationship between people and people. How can I, or you guys, or people, have a relationship that starts where you're a stranger to the brand, or you become acquaintances, or you become friends, or you become family? How do you move through this progression? How do, you, how do both sides feel about this relationship? What are the behaviors between each other? How do they treat each other? So if a brand and person, if they're strangers, now, the person doesn't know the brand. The brand might not know the person. They don't know each other at this point. How do we get to move them to the next stage where they become acquaintances? At this point, when they're acquaintances, now the person recognizes and recalls the brand and is considering and engaging and achieving a goal together with the brand. And the brand also recognizes the person. It's not just, I know you, you don't know me, but we actually begin to know each other. When they become friends, the person begins to prefer this brand over other brands by selecting the offerings from this brand. The brand helps people achieve their goals through these offerings. So they actually have, they prefer being with, with each other, just like you prefer spending more time with your friend over other people. And then lastly, when you become family, now the person is committed and loyal to the brand over all other brands. And then the brand simultaneously values this person, their interactions and opinions over other people. So they both elevated the relationship together with each other, not just treating them, oh, you're just buying my stuff and that's it and that's it. The second thing we focus on is how experiences need to be holistic. Brand experiences are a complex system of interconnected touch points. And for a lot of companies, they use the touch points to go through this process or through different departments where the person interacts with the marketing and the marketing pulls them into the product. They begin to use the product and how can I use add-on services to get them to spend more money with me? And then at that point, they begin to feel the value of the brand. But what we find is people navigate through multiple touch points, through a network, and each person has their own different path. So within a company, we need to look at these touch points in a different way. We need to consider a wide network of touch points. So these touch points can exist in many different forms and shapes. They could be offerings in terms of product and services. These provide the value to the customer. They could they could uh, be environments, but I'm not just talking about a physical environment. A digital environment is an environment as well. Employees, the employees of the company are critical for delivering the experience too. They could be within the role within the company. Their title is very important. Oh, you're a sales manager. Oh, you're, you're a waiter staff. Or, oh, you're my friend, something like that. And their behaviors, How, what sort of behaviors do they have? And lastly, through communications, through the, through the messages and through the medium which the messages are communicated. It's through these 
areas that we can deliver experience for, uh, for people. But in terms of a, a network of touch points, it is of extreme complexity. So what we have here is, uh, what we call this is a experience master plan. And this runs along a uh, relationship model. And you can see here stranger, acquaintances, friends, family. On this side over here, you can see we've isolated based on the product and service offerings, uh, environments, uh, people's behaviors, and communications. And through this journey, you can see many, many, many different touch points being created. And through this network, what becomes really challenging for a business is if I only have six months to launch something, what should I launch? What should I do? Or if within one year's time, what should I do? What is the minimum viable experience that I can create for my customers? So as designers now, we are beginning to develop strategies. Oh, you should focus on this, you should focus on this, and you should focus on this. And the challenge I said earlier about the silos and different areas of design is they're not going to be delivered through one department. They're going to be delivered through multiple departments simultaneously. The other challenge is when we look at data and digital transformation, these sort of things, then how does information transfer from one touch point to another touch point? A lot of times the information at a retail store is completely separate from a WeChat store. They don't know, the, inf the information doesn't travel back and forth. But through this, you can begin to map which touch points and you know where the information needs to go. So we're looking at from a system standpoint, you know, how do we begin to design the experience? And lastly, organizations need to create their own future. So we have a model where we look at now, what we're trying to do is we're take, trying to take an organization from where they are now to someplace in the future, whatever this desired future might be for them. And a lot of the approaches that we may use now is we're trying to understand current people and the current experience that they have. We may look at best-in-class organizations for benchmarks. We look at the competition. But this is very much in the now state or sometimes in the past. But what we're designing is we're designing a future state. And this future state may be further off. It could just be six months, it could be one year, five years, 10 years, could be 20 years off. But this future state is a future person. It's not the same person right now, but it's the same person, but they've changed over a period of time. And we're trying to design an ideal future experience for them. But in order to design this experience for them, we also need to understand the greater context. So in the future context, what may influence these decisions for the business as well as for the person? You know, what societal factors, what economic factors, technological factors, environmental factors, even policy factors, they all come into play. A great example of this is, um, you know, there was a company that came to us and said, you know, we want to focus on developing air purifiers in China because we know that a few years ago the air quality was really, really bad. But simultaneously, from a policy factor in China, their government has made great strides in reducing the pollution. And will bad pollution actually be a problem five to ten years from now? I know from living in China that over within the past five years, pollution has gotten a lot better. So from a business standpoint, will this be a concern for future people? We don't know. So we need to understand through these different factors what this future context might be in order to design this ideal future experience. Lastly, in order to get your business from one place to another, it's not as simple as, okay, we've made the decision and we're here. It's not enough to just have this vision of the future. How do you begin to, to plan action to get there? How do you backcast? You know, in order to do this, this, we need to do this. And before we can get here, we need to do this. And before we can do, so you're pushing backwards. And simultaneously, you're looking forward. Okay, so from here, where we are now, we need to do this, and then we need to do this. So what we found is we are now actually in the business of organizational change. We are designing how an organization changes over time in order for them to deliver this ideal experience. So 
Lastly, one of the things I find really interesting about this model is I, I remember the quote from Herbert Simon, the definition of design. So everyone designs who uh, plans courses of action to move from an existing situation to a preferred situation. This is existing situation. This is a preferred situation. But what I've also, a lot of people I feel like focus on the existing and preferred, with this being preferred. But I always love the courses of action. It means that what do you need to do in order to get there? That's where I find this part particularly important. These are the courses of action. These are the things that the, gut, the organization needs to do in order to get there. And that is a very important part of design. So with X thinking, we feel that organizations will be able or will be better positioned to position, envision, and plan these ideal brand experiences. And organizations will be able to enhance their capability to transfer or to transform the unknown future, to be able to be prepared for this unknown future. And they'll be able to create better possibilities for people for organizations, and hopefully for the whole world. So lastly, just a quick bit of promotion. I know a lot of this stuff is new. Our company has actually been spending a lot of time researching this, and uh, together with uh, Jason Huang, uh, the CEO of Tang, we've been working on writing a book together. And this book is based on the 12-year history of our company. Uh, it's got real-world case studies from the work that Tang has done, uh, it also has a lot of the, uh, it's examined, you know, what sort of international or global methodologies are used, but how have we adjusted them or used them in a different way in China? So this book is going to launch uh, second half of this year and in Chinese, and the English version will be launched shortly after. So thank you very much. <laughs>